Hey everybody, it's Tyler here at the University of North Dakota Mall of America Signature Event, and we got another fantastic team here, 2982X coming out of Massachusetts. This is all on red. This team coming in, uh, a new team, but they have experience in Vex already and been looking really good here on the field. A couple key aspects I want you to pay attention to on this. Uh, once we get around, it have super wide intake. We'll talk more about that for Autonomous. And the other side here, uh, a couple of really great things. The D score on this, uh, they have a really awesome aligner. Able to score from pretty much almost like any angle to get right up in there and score right away. I love that on this robot too. It's a lot to break down on this robot here, all on red. Let's learn more about them coming up here on Fits and Parts. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Grow Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit RECF.org and get connected. Jason, so much to break down with this robot here. We're gonna start with the intake and then go into many other mechanisms. So just talking about uh, choice to go with the super wide intake, how it's been working out for your team. All right, so our intake will hold over two and a half balls, as you can see here. It's very useful because in three autonomous, there's a clump of three cubes like this. Well, if you go into that, most teams will have to swivel around that, you know, arc shape to get it. But we can just directly intake that perfectly fine without any speed loss because of our wide intake. And that allows us to complete a solo autonomous win point in under 50 seconds. Very cool. And uh, as we go into like your indexing uh, mechanism, you just keep walking through uh, some of the other attributes that you have. All right. So we actually have a very unique funnel, as I like to say. So it's not symmetrical at all. One side is actually more, more inwards than the other side because we found out that during testing, if one side is more inwards than the other, that means that one side will take bias. For example, currently, this side takes bias for our scoring. If there's no bias, then the two balls will just be jammed and neither side will go first. So with this bias, one side will always be funneled faster than the other side, which is very effective for our scoring. As you can see here. And your team is doing a, you're doing a manual color sort, if I remember yes, correctly. Yes, we are. Talking about, so talk more about just how that process works. And I know when we talked, you're looking at uh, doing some sort of automation with that in the future, yeah. potentially, too. So for our color sort, we have this counter roller over here that spins downwards when we're color sorting and spins upwards normally when we're intaking. So for the color sort, it goes, goes down like, like that. So. This roller is very effective because we could just put our opponent's balls down in the basket instead of having to go up and score. So this system actually is very effective. We were going to add an autonomous and automation for this, but we found an issue where if two balls were together side by side, then the color sensor will only sense one ball, not the other, which will be inconsistent if we want to sort out only one color. In the future, we decided to add a funnel that goes up like that. So only one ball could pass during the color sorting stage. So we can have a more consistent color sort if we do run an automation. Brian, your liner has been so effective uh, so far in competition play. So I'd love to just hear more about uh, how you went about uh, designing this and any maybe iterations you went through that get it right because you guys are just going up scoring so quick. I love that on your bot. Yeah, so our liner is actually a really unique part of this robot. So as you can see, we have sort of the opposite shape of the actual long goal. Unlike a lot of teams who have that triangle that you see a lot, especially on some of those hood bots, we have a um, in concave area, which lets us align to the long goals and even the central goals really easily. So these gears on either side actually kind of act as wall riders, but for that aligner, which makes it much easier for us to align ourselves, making it so we can practically score at any angle. And then so another, we have two aligners actually. So this one is used for our long goals and then we have this upper uh, aligner used for that center goal. And this, this aligner actually um, also works really well, but aligns us to that goal. And which serves basically the same purpose, but for the center goals, which makes it so we can score on all three of those, all three different types. I noticed on your uh, drive train, you have a uh, traction wheel in the middle here. Can you just uh, break down a little bit the decision of what wheels you went with? Yeah, so we initially started with um, that six omni wheel design that you see a lot of um, using, but then we found out that through scrims, that having that one, having six traction wheel, I mean omni wheels, makes it so you can get pushed around, pushed around really easily, making it really hard to score. And so we decided to switch out that middle omni for a traction wheel, 
and that actually made it so we could score much more consistently because it was harder to push us away from that goal. When we came up to you, uh, you had some judges here earlier. One of the things that we were talking that you talked to them about was usage of uh, the M4 screws uh, on your uh, bot. Uh, so you have the tongue mech kind of on the front here. Let's talk more about that. And then also we got to talk about your uh, D-scoring mech too. Yeah, so M4 screws not only look really good with our robot color scheme, they're also much thinner than regular uh, screws that you, most people use. And that makes it so we can actually get under that um, each ball while it's in those match loading tubes which makes it much easier for us to actually uh, match load. And then so if you look at some of our matches, um, it's, our tongue mech makes it extremely easy for us to just go switch in between and cycle in between that match load and that uh, long goal. Speaking about matches, uh, can you talk a little bit more about your match strategy, uh, especially when you have a full alliance, just kind of how that uh, all works. Unfortunately, one of the matches, uh, you, you were missing alliance partner, and still you were scoring left and right, which is great. But in an optimal match, break down how some of your match strategy works. Yeah, so we have two different scenarios. One scenario is when you win autonomous, and one the other scenario is when you lose autonomous. So if you win autonomous, you already have that 20-point swing. And so we found that once you win that, you can have one robot focus mainly on one long goal, fill it up, get that control zone, which is another 10 points, and then have the other, other bot focus on those center goals while defending so that your um, opponent can't really score on the other long goal that you aren't focused on. And it, makes, it basically guarantees uh, the win, especially because that center, those, that control zone is 20 points, 20 point swing, and that autonomous is already another 20 point swing, which makes it a 40 point swing, just really hard to come back to or come back to, from. And then the other scenario is if you lose that autonomous. Now losing autonomous is really scary because it's really hard to make up that 20 point difference. And so you gotta play extremely aggressive. And so once we lose that autonomous, we want both teams to be focusing on those long goals, but not to forget those center goals because those center goals still provide that 28 point swing because of that eight point set, uh, control and the six, six point control for the bottom goal. And so we want to be able to have those two control zones while defending uh, and making sure that we get that centers as well. From playing a few matches so far here at Mall, uh, are there any changes to what some of your match strategy might look like or anything you really learned from your first few matches? Um, one big thing would be just making sure that we get those cycle times correct. Having an extremely quick cycle between those that match load uh, tube and the, um, the long goal is extremely important. That allows us to get control of that control goal before other teams can get to it. And we also found that to do this, we need it, we it's required to have um, different side intake and different side others opposite side uh, scoring, so that you can just go move back and forth without needing that extra 180 degree turn. Jason, as we wrap up on this robot, talking about uh, some of the other programming features, we talked about you know we you want to get the color shirt going, but what are some features you want to highlight that are currently on the robot? Currently, we only run one odometry wheel, as you can see down here. The reason why we didn't run two odometry wheels is because we have traction wheels already, which prevented horizontal drift across the field. So a second odometry wheel will be unnecessary. So we only have this one that tracks the vertical location. And for the horizontally wise, we just track the location of these wheels and the degree it's going at to calculate where the robot is on the field so we can have a more consistent autonomous. These traction wheels also provide a benefit for autonomous because there is barely any horizontal drift with the robot during autonomous. So like this, we could just go across the field without any trouble and have a very consistent autonomous. Overall, if I'm placing my bets, they might be on red here and I can't wait to see, of course, how you all on red do as a team. Good best of luck here at the uh, mall event. Thanks for taking time to break down this robot as well too. A lot of great stuff going on and I know we're gonna be seeing you at some future events uh, coming up soon too. So can't wait to see your continued progress. Thanks a lot. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the bell to stay up to date on future fun videos. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Girl Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit recf.org and get connected.